Tonight on CTV News, a three-strike warning for a teen who seriously assaulted an elderly man in New Brighton. The future of Akaroa is in the spotlight and Cirque du Soleil set to return to Christchurch. Broadcasting across Canterbury, from the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening, welcome to CTV News, streaming live every night at ctv.co.nz. Well, a teen who seriously assaulted an elderly man in New Brighton is likely to get a three-strike warning. 19-year-old Rasham Fatafar pleaded guilty at the Christchurch District Court today. He assaulted a 72-year-old at the mall last month. Fatafar will appear in court for sentencing in October. The judge told him the three-strike warning, which applies to violent offenders, will be read out to him on that date. A woman who sold fake raffle tickets is being forced to give money to, stole, to the stolen kindergarten that she stole from, rather. She pretended to raise uh, money for the 43-year-old Kelly Ann Chalmers has been sentenced to 80 hours community service at the Christchurch District Court. The court heard Chalmers sold 25 raffle tickets to shops in New Brighton under the guise of fundraising for some kindergarten. She has since apologised to owners. Well, if you live in Akaroa, it's time to have your say in the future of the town's hospital. Uh, there are plans there to build a new family health centre. Here's Chelsea Daniels. Progress towards an integrated family health centre in Akaroa has begun, with the Canterbury District Health Board starting a consultation process to gauge what the community thinks. It's an interesting proposal um, because whenever we transfer land out of our ownership, we have to consult with our community. But actually we're transferring the land from our ownership to ownership with the community and with Naitahu. So the District Health Board will still have part ownership of the land, but it's to facilitate the building of a new health facility in Akaroa. Yeah. Maintaining a good health standard in Akaroa has been hard since the earthquakes, but Carolyn says that the DHB are dedicated on working towards a brighter future for the town. Well, it means we can stabilise the health services in Akaroa. It's been rather difficult since the earthquake because we couldn't repair the hospital. And so they've had to sort of really make do. But this will give us an opportunity to build purpose-built purpose 21st century and something that will last the community for a long time. The idea of making healthcare more accessible in Canterbury is something that they are very passionate about. It's all about supporting people to live well and healthy and in their own homes and their own communities. And because we've been able to do that, we've actually been able to reduce the amount of time people spend in our hospitals and also the amount of people who end up in age residential care. So people get to age well in their own homes and in their own communities by making sure the right services are as close to home as possible. The news comes hand in hand with an update that the old Akaroa Hospital is to be demolished soon, an endeavour that has been in the pipelines for quite some time. Right after the quake we got engineering reports that said it wasn't safe to occupy. Uh, it's taken us a long time to get around to the demolishing and it's taken a bit longer because as usual there's asbestos so we have to manage it carefully but yes it will be demolished quite shortly. They are encouraging the community and interested parties to have their say, with submissions due by September 11. In terms of the next steps in the process, the consultation finishes on the 11th of September. We'll have a public meeting on the 6th of September on the way towards that end. We'll review the submissions and put in our proposal to the Minister to get his sign off for us to transfer the land. So we're expecting to be able to make an announcement probably by the end of September because everyone's trying to push this along and get it to happen really fast for the community. And then we'll be in the hands of the builders in terms of how long it takes to build the facility. Yeah. And the DHB are hopeful that the results of the submissions will be positive. We have to go through the process because the land was originally obtained under the Public Works Act for the purposes of health. We're actually still using it for the purposes of health, so we don't really think that the community will react against that idea. And we've worked with the community the whole way through this. So this is what they want. If you are interested in voicing your opinion about the sale of the land on the Akaroa Hospital site, you can make your contributions online or pick up a hard copy from the Akaroa Library or Akaroa Health Centre. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Well, after days of speculation, the mystery smell in the east is likely to be the smouldering earthquake rubble in Billwood, and that's despite the council saying otherwise. A landfill fire thought to have been put out last week was unlikely to have been fully extinguished. The fire at the Burwood Resource Recovery Park was ignited by spontaneous combustion two weeks ago. 
The park is being used to dump building rubble from the earthquakes and Recovery Park Management says the fire was caused by heat within the compressed materials. A few days ago, residents in the area started complaining about a noxious smell, but its source couldn't be identified by the Recovery Park, ECAN or the fire service. Park management has continued to suffocate the fire through mounting soil on the rubble pile in a process to let it burn out on its own accord. Little trace of the fire could be detected over the last few days. This is now thought to be due to the southerly winds which had blown the smell away from the residential areas to the south and west of the park. But in the last few days the wind has changed, making locals aware that the fire is still smouldering. The Canterbury District Health Board says the burn is unlikely to cause health problems, but residents may notice nasal irritations, which may tend to be more noticeable in those with pre-existing health conditions. In the meantime, the Christchurch City Council says the fire is contained, monitored around the clock, and it may take a few more days before it burns out fully. Their electric cars with a difference. Local children have received the cars designed to help them with their physical motor skills. Here's Jared McCulloch. This is Nate. He's 18 months old and taking his new BMW car for a spin. <laughs> yes, you heard right. A scratch can give him a bit of independence. You can get around the house a bit more and things like that. It'll be good. Nate suffers from Angel Man Syndrome, a disorder that affects both movement and balance. And he's one of 10 lucky Canterbury children who are presented with their new form of mobility. The charity Go Baby Go has now delivered a total of 36 electric cars that have been given to children with disabilities around the country. We kicked it off last October, uh, did five cars before Christmas. Um, it worked really well, blew us away, so we thought, right, we're going to aim at 50 cars for this year. The concept originally came from the United States when a company came up with an affordable way to get youngsters moving. Cole Galloway, he's a professor at Delaware, and he started the idea off, the concept off, of taking toys and making fun opportunities for kids. To build up a car like this is about $1,500. Time we do alterations, so basically when they leave here they can start driving away. The children are aged between 18 months to 6 years old, providing them with the means to move and in style. Nate's new ride has been customised so he can control his car using his head by pushing against the back of the seat. The controls can also be moved to different areas of the vehicle depending on the child's needs so they can control the acceleration with their hands rather than their feet. The kids with mobility issues can play, they can move with their brothers and sisters and, and just engage with life. <laughs> and you'll have lots of help from your brother, won't you? <laughs> You know, a lot of these kids have no motor movement themselves. A lot of them can't crawl, a lot of them definitely can't walk. Um, so for them to be able to get into a vehicle and move it themselves is just mind-blowing. Some pick it up straight away and others take some time to get used to their new ride. We can see there's a need and we need to get keep on getting funding and keep on getting cars. So as long as we keep on doing that, we can keep on going forever. The battery lasts for around an hour and a half before it needs to be charged, usually overnight. And although getting more cars to deserving children can't always happen overnight, they're working to reach their goal by the end of the year. But for now, it's go baby go. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Still to come here on CTV News, what's in store for Canterbury's growth for the next 30 years? Welcome back, it's Christchurch's first completed anchor project and today the bus exchange opened on time and on budget. The final stage of Christchurch's bus exchange is now complete. And despite earlier delays, the city's first anchor project has been built on time. Today's completion will double the exchange's bus base, provide a secure lock-up area for bikes and have an extended passenger waiting area. Retail space has also been let and businesses will move in over the next few weeks. The eight new bus bays will be added to the existing eight, with buses due to start using them once ECAN finishes testing. The exchange can now be accessed from Chorm Street, Colombo Street and the main entrance is now on the corner of Colombo and Litchfield Streets. Part of the budget was spent on new artworks using Māori artists to describe the South Island and Canterbury Plains. 
While Sarah is pleased that the first of the city's anchor project is completed on time, there have been 20 bus accidents at the exchange since it opened in May. Many, including the Bus Drivers Union, say its design is ill-conceived, as buses have to drive into and reverse out of the bays. All of the accidents have occurred while reversing or manoeuvring in the bays. To date, no one has been injured and the drivers continue to undergo additional training. What will Canterbury's infrastructure look like in 30 years' time? Well, today, Earthquake Recovery Minister Jerry Brownlee outlined what's in store for the city. Here's Gerald McCulloch. It's nearly five years on since the September 2010 earthquake, with the government today tracking the progress of the city's rebuild. The Earthquake Recovery Minister announced the 30-year plan today at the New Zealand Council for Infrastructure Development, a conference that was held in Christchurch, outlining the current achievements from the government and the rebuild's current situation as business leaders listened on. Greater Christchurch will be rebuilt as a place that we can all be proud of, a place that we, we do want to live in, a place where we do want to work in and a place where we do want to raise our families. While it's been a significant task, uh, physically, psychologically and fiscally, I am extremely proud of what we've done up to this point. The Minister discussed building consents and the number of those that have been dished out since December last year, rising by around 20%. He also talked about jobs in the region. Canterbury also boasts the lowest unemployment rate in New Zealand at just 3.1% compared to just over 6% nationally. And over the last two years, many of the efforts that you have made have seen nearly 30,000 extra jobs created in the region. The controversial convention centre was also mentioned today. It's understood that millions of dollars has already been spent to pay for the land for the anchor project to be built on, with Minister Jerry Brownlee suggesting a step forward for the anchor project. He talked about other projects as well that have been put on hold, including the Metro Sports Centre. Negotiations toward the development and arrangements necessary for the convention centre are continuing in a very positive vein and I'm confident that we'll reach final agreement on our preferred de development partners shortly and be able to make tangible progress on the project in a similar time frame to the Metro Sports facility. The sports centre is scheduled to be partially opened by 2019 and fully by 2020, but the Minister says the cost should not be an issue in the future. While there has been plenty of local debate about that facility, uh, these projects are important, uh, they are intergenerational and they need to be considered properly so that when they're built they don't become a millstone around the neck of either the ratepayers or taxpayers. And I don't think it's bad to take time uh, when you're looking to do such big jobs. The Minister also mentioned the criticism from the Infrastructure Development Council about the black canvas of Christchurch, saying they missed the mark. The planned and systematic approach that we've taken is considered by many international experts to be peerless. So it was a little disappointing that the SID description was that the city was uh, facing an opportunity lost uh, and looking like it was building something a little bland. We're nearly five years through um, this process uh, and it's time to actually start looking way ahead um, and actually ask ourselves questions about what the next stage is. The focus now for the government will be the transition to the new Regenerate Christchurch, which takes Sarah's place in April next year. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. It's been seen by 155 million people around the world and soon it'll be Christchurch's turn to see the International Cirque du Soleil and for the first time. National circus show Cirque du Soleil is heading to Christchurch for the first time. The tour next February will be the first time the acclaimed circus has visited a New Zealand centre outside Auckland. The circus has been going for over 30 years and now stars 4,000 employees from more than 50 countries. Over this time, Cirque has performed to over 155 million spectators in 300 cities around the world. And now it's Christchurch's turn. The circus will be performing Quidam, a classic show it's been running since Cirque's inception in 1984. It will be 
be performed at the Horn Castle Arena and marks the latest showcase to visit Christchurch after the earthquakes. Still to come here on CTV News, business reports and your region's weather. And welcome back to CTV News. Just a quick reminder, we are broadcasting live at ctv.co.nz. Well, now it's time for Warren Head with this week's uh, business roundup from headliner.co.nz. Hi, I'm Warren Head from headliner.co.nz. This week brought yet another one of those dairy price auctions and almost unbelievably, things turned around and values went up. And in fact, they went up so sharply I guess we have to curb our enthusiasm as to what it might mean. There's still a very long way to go to stabilise this particular market and produce some decent prices for our farmers and lift their spirits um, uh, as the season goes further ahead. But these auctions occur every two weeks. And the important thing I wanted to note was that this particular auction was the very first since Fonterra cut supply to the market. Now, why they have not done this so much in the past I do not know it's hard to fathom but they did and I believe they took out of the market the equivalent of the entire dairy export market of the United States over the, this auction and the others to come so in response of course with less product the market has gone up because demand has returned now the Chinese consumers as well who are our biggest market they may not be buying as much of our milk products as they did last year or before that, but one of the banks, ASB Bank, is pointing out that the Chinese consumers are coming here in droves as tourists. And what are they coming to look at? Our dairy cows. So it's a funny old world, isn't it? But our tourism side is in terms of agricultural visits and looking at the fauna and looking at the livestock is apparently a very big trend up in Asia. Now, this week has brought a lot of results through from the big companies recording their June 30 results to the stock exchange. I'm just going to pick a couple out that have an interest for us here in Canterbury. And one of those, of course, is Fletcher Building. And the thing I took away from this, well, it was a bit of a flat result overall, but this is a giant company with a lot going on in Canterbury. Their backlog is now $2.4 billion worth of work with major products still to come through. So what is this nonsense about everything tapering off in terms of the construction side? All the big projects that the government has promised Christchurch are only now really getting underway. And of course, we'll see this company at the forefront of some of that. Now in Christchurch too, Fletcher has contracted with the Crown to build over 200 residential properties, what's called the Awatia site. It's near the new showgrounds on the western edge of the city. And another 130 in the areas of Colombo and Well Street. And this is with a unit called Fletcher Living. And they are the preferred partner as well for the east and north frames in the residential precinct in central Christchurch. So you start to see now that some of these landmark projects, residential and governmental, have yet to flow on through. And finally, just to take a look at TradeMe, the online marketplace, uh, their revenue was another high tide mark, 11% up, but the profitability was quite flat, only 0.1% higher. So no surprise to me to see that they're opening up new markets and other products. And last week they did announce that they'd moved into insurance with Tower as the business partner there. This is not to say that their traditional activities are falling off by any means. One of the things that uh, was an interesting takeaway from the result earlier today was that Trade Me Motors is still motoring forward with a 24% lift in its revenue on a year ago. And their Trade Me property is proving to be the most uh, popular site by country mile around New Zealand and attracting people to go there more frequently with devices like Inside View, which allows the viewer to take a stroll through the interior of the house that you think you might like to buy. Take a look at that this weekend. I'm Warren Head for headliner.co.nz. Thanks, Warren. Now time for the region's weather forecast.
evening, Kendry. Today we saw southwesterly winds easing off and sunny skies for most places. It was really sunny when I woke up this morning. Lovely way to start the day. 10 degrees for Timaru and Waimate, 11 for Geraldine and Tamuka today. Central Canterbury, Christchurch, you had 12 degrees. A little bit cooler for Akaroa at least and Dalford on 10. 11 for Ashburton and Methven, you took out 9 degrees today. Heading further north, Kaikoura, you saw 11 degrees as your high. 9 for Cheviot, Amberley, Culverton and Oxford. 10 there for Rangiora and 8 degrees for Hammer Springs. And over to the Alpine region, a little bit cooler here. 5 degrees for Arthur's Pass. Tomorrow's weather for the major centres is looking good. Sunny skies for Timaru, 11 degrees for your high and minus 1 for your morning. Could be a little bit frosty for that Friday morning. Looking to Ashburton, 12 degrees is also expected for you and a lovely clear fine day. Zero though for your morning there. Christchurch, mainly dry and fine as well. 12 degrees is also expected. Two degrees for your morning though, again, could be a little bit of a chilly one. And looking to Kaikoura, northeasterly winds coming on through for you tomorrow. 12 degrees for your high and four for your morning. Looking to the rest of the Canterbury region, we're also expecting that calm, pleasant weather. 10 degrees for Tamuka and Geraldine and light winds breezing on through for everyone. Light winds also expected for central Canterbury and sunny skies for everyone here too. Akaroa, Leeston and Darfield all on 12 degrees and Methven 10 degrees for you. Looking further north, again lovely calm weather we're predicting for tomorrow. A little bit of cloud here and there for Hammer Springs and we're also expecting a few northerly winds for Rangiora. And the Alpine region just 7 degrees for Lake Tekapo tomorrow. Your weekend is also looking pretty good. Sunny skies for most, 12 degrees there for Christchurch and 11 for Ashburton and Timaru. A few northeasterlies for you Kaikoura. Looking to Sunday, it actually just keeps getting better. Warmer temperatures and 15 degrees for Christchurch, 14 there for Kaikoura and a few cloudy patches for you Christchurch. The rest of the Canterbury region can also look forward to these clear skies over the weekend. Sunny patches for most places and as we look over to Sunday, that sunshine is also continuing. We're seeing lovely sun for South Canterbury as we head further north, a few cloudy patches here and there but we are expecting those temperatures to increase. So if you're looking for something to do over the weekend, getting outdoors, there is the final of the schoolboys rugby on Saturday. That will be kicking off at 2.45 at the Rugby Park. St Beads versus Shirley Boys High School. Who will win? You're going to have to check it out. That's your weather for Thursday. Thanks Mercy and that is CTV News for Thursday. Good evening. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.